from around the world, across the nation, and right here in the beautiful Texas Hill Country. We're coming to you from New Braunfels, Texas, Centaur World Headquarters. This is Talking Synths, and I'm Sam. I'm Carlos. And let's talk some synths. All right, <laughs> let's get to it. All right. Now that that motorcycle is driven by and quieted the uh, vicinity, we've had a number of people write in and say, Talking synths? I thought y'all were going to talk about vocoders. Yeah. So, a uh, legitimate question. Mm -hmm. uh, that might be a short-lived podcast, though. I mean, how many episodes can you talk about vocoders? But we'll do it at least once. Yeah. We'll, do, we'll do that coming up. Should be a cool episode. We'll talk about vocoders and their cousins, the talk, talk box. boxes. Yeah. Cool, cool. But not today. <laughs> today we have other plans. Uh, we, we thought we'd sort of break down parts of synthesizers and talk about certain pieces. Mm -hmm. And so today we're going to start with the oscillators. And so we have a beautiful Prophet 5 here in front of us. Uh, that was another comment we had uh, from, from one guy and it was like one of those duh moments. It was like, this is a podcast about synths. Why aren't we hearing any synths? <laughs> Well, and for those of you who aren't on the Patreon, uh, we actually, we started last week with power supplies. Yeah. So today we'll be covering oscillators. So now we're assuming the power supply is working and mm -hmm. it's feeding juice to the oscillator. And uh, so let's just dive in. Kind of the basics of the oscillator, that's what makes the initial noise in the synthesizer. Mm -hmm. And um, the waveform, which most people are familiar with, you know, you turn the little knob to select the different waveforms and you get different sounds. So on the Prophet 5, let's start with the, uh, well, let's start with the most basic, the triangle wave. <phone rings> Sounds like the uh, test tone at the, when, the yeah. when the TV station goes off the <laughs> air. But probably you youngsters don't know anything about that yeah. because <laughs> the TV stations go off the air these days. I don't <laughs> think so. What's a TV? <laughs> I've never heard of it. <laughs> it used to be midnight rolled around and uh, the, mm -hmm. the Wild Western show ended and then you heard <phone rings> all the way until yeah. uh, 6 a.m. when they came back on the air. <laughs> but that's a basic sine wave. Looks just like Triangle. that. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, okay. On the, on the uh, Prophet 5, it's, it's actually a triangle mm -hmm. wave. Uh, they're very similar. They don't have any harmonic overtones, just a very raw, basic sound. And, um, you know, when you drop the, that sound way down, you, you get some of those really low, you can get a real rumbly yeah. kind of bass and, you know, kind of mm -hmm. gives a, a hip-hop vibe to some stuff. But, mm -hmm. but up in the high register, uh, real basic, no overtones. Yeah. Um, and then you can start changing that wave around. Let's select a square wave. And you can see it's a little more buzzy. It has, has more harmonics, and, uh, but it's still a little bit of a hollow sound. And then you get a, a sawtooth wave. A little more jagged. Yeah, it's more, more aggressive yet still. And so uh, changing the waveform is the, the basic way to change the timbre of, of what sound you're creating. Uh, that goes way beyond when you get into something like a wavetable synth, and instead of sawtooth wave and triangle wave, you have piano wave <laughs> or timpani hit or something. So, so real quick, right here uh, on our oscillator section, I see two knobs. Um, and maybe you can explain to me what they do. I see a frequency and a fine. Well, um, I think you're just kidding. You probably already <laughs> know what those do, but but the frequency, of course, adjusts the uh, the the pitch of it and. The, the Prophet 5 is unique uh, from, from other analog synths. Usually when you turn the knob, you don't get that stepping. And on the Prophet 5, you do mm -hmm. get stepping at, at each, each uh, half tone. And then the fine tune, of course, is... You know, you get really, really fine tuning. And, and that's useful for when you have two oscillators going, you can detune them a little bit okay. and get that, get that beating sound. Um, one really aha moment I had with figuring out synthesizers mm -hmm. and sort of electronics and all that. Um, there, there's probably in most people a disconnect between, okay, this is a saw wave and it sounds like this, and I know what a square wave sounds mm -hmm. like, uh, but, but then you get into the electronics of it and you think, or, or the physics of it, and you, you, you know, 
you, what, what does that mean? Um, what does it mean when it goes through the synthesizer and comes out the other end? Uh, a really interesting way to think about it, let's say you have a sine wave that's just like this. Uh, if you feed that into a speaker, that, the, the shape of that waveform mm -hmm. draws what the speaker cone is doing. As in the way it's physically moving? Exactly. So a sine, a sine wave, the speaker cone is, you know, mm -hmm. if the speaker's facing toward you and you look at the cone from the side, it's just wow. going to go back and forth in a sine wave. If you feed that speaker the sawtooth wave that looks like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's going to go, mm -hmm. if, if you do it really mm -hmm. slow. I mean, mm -hmm. you'd have to speed that up a million times to, to get actual mm -hmm. audio frequencies. But the, the speaker, cone is actually drawing that waveform and so that's that's a neat way to to relate it and for a square wave the speaker cone is going dunk, 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 dunk. Yeah. and when you speed that up into audio frequencies that's what makes the oh. sound and so when we were setting this up earlier uh, one thing that i thought was kind of interesting when we were on the square wave and you were so we're talking about the the way the speaker's moving mm -hmm. the prophet 5 has a button called low frequency and you can al almost kind of hear, as I'm hearing that click, I can kind of visualize the pop of yeah. the speaker. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. yeah. Um, so let's talk about a feature that many people use but don't really understand exactly what's going on, and that's pulse width and pulse width modulation. And so what that means, when you have a square wave, uh, it's kind of a hollow sound, um, and what that means in, in the shape of the wave is the wave goes up and then it goes down and then it goes back up and each of those uppy downs mm -hmm. are equal in length. Okay. Uh, so it's basically making square shapes. Uh, pulse width is what takes that square wave, let's say it's this long, with pulse width you can squeeze that uh, mm -hmm. and, and make a shorter pulse and then a long downtime and then another short pulse and then a long downtime that changes the sound and gives it a different timbre and so on a synthesizer where you have a knob that says pulse width if you are just hearing the square wave you can take that knob and turn it and hear the difference in the timbre you can hear the sound get real thin as the pulse actually gets real thin So as I do that, you, you might think, hey, well, that's kind of cool to tweak that knob and make that sound change. Mm -hmm. Well, that's exactly what pulse width modulation is. Um, it's taking your low frequency oscillator, mm -hmm. sending it to this knob, basically, and, and your, your low frequency oscillator, which on, in this case, we have it set up to be a triangle wave, it's telling the pulse width, all right, make that wave shrink and then make that wave expand again and, and shrink again and that gives it some some animated sound so some sonic motion so oh. so you can hear you can sort of hear a wah 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 in there that's that's the uh, the LFO speed sweeping that waveform around there, there it is without it So it's a great way to add animation to your sound. So this is a single oscillator. Nothing else is changing. We don't have filters closing. We don't have envelopes going, just a sustaining sound. Yet we can still get that nice motion on it. And it's a good way to make like a string sound. So. Yeah, you know, it's, it's far from a yeah. static sound now, so. And I kind of noticed when you were doing that, as you turn the pulse width up, there's almost a point where it almost completely disappears. Yeah, in fact, on, on the Prophet 5, uh, let's turn the pulse width off. So okay. back to our square. Yeah. Uh, you, you can turn it to the extremes where the, where the pulse gets so narrow that mm -hmm. it basically evaporates okay. and, and you don't hear it anymore. So, so of course, if you want to make a real sound, you got to yeah. kind of stay out of that range. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's 
Pulse width mod. It's uh, interesting. It's <laughs> it's a it's a great thing to know if you're programming sounds and you know make some animation with string mm -hmm. sounds and all. Um, and it gives it you know gives it the fatness of you know detuned oscillators when you're still yeah. just using one oscillator. Wow, really interesting. And so and and just because I've recently started messing around with an MS20 Mini. And it has this really cool feature where you can route external audio through it. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think that's what they actually use that pulse width mod at the most extreme setting for. So you can kind of cancel out the oscillator, hit your envelopes, and process that external audio without adding, obviously, oh, well the sounds a, of the that, oscillators. Yeah, well that's an interesting, yeah. interesting way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you, can't you just turn the oscillator off? I don't um, know. But I well, that that's what I've heard the the way to do it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I had something. Yeah. I'm I'm still kind of new to this and still learning lots mm -hmm. of things. But that was the suggestion that I heard in order to get that that clean mm -hmm. tone was just to turn it all the way up. Yeah. Okay. I, and I think this goes back to when we were talking about um, how certain keyboards, when they have digital effects, it still has to you still have to trigger the envelope right, right, to get right. sound. So yeah. I, th I think it's something along that architecture. Yeah. So that, that yeah. is a kind of backdoor way to do that mm -hmm. sort of stuff. And just kind of latch it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So what, is there anything else we should say about oscillators? Uh, they're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the oscillator is much less characteristic on a certain synthesizer than the filter is, for mm -hmm. instance. So if you have a triangle wave, for instance, it doesn't so much matter if you're making that triangle wave with a Moog oscillator or a sequential oscillator, it's still going to be basically a triangle wave. But it's, you know, it's the filter and the other stuff that gives mm -hmm. it more character. Um, some, some synthesizers have a lot more oscillator choices. Mm -hmm. The mini Moog, for instance, you have uh, about eight different settings for, for uh, wave, wave forms. The, the Prophet 5, you have the, the ramp wave or the sawtooth, you have a mm -hmm. triangle wave and the, and the square. Um, and on the Juno 106, for instance, you have a sawtooth and a square, but that's it. So, mm -hmm. you know, the synthesizers that give you more choices there, you're going to have a little bit more sonic flexibility. Wow. But there you have it, oscillators. <laughs> the oscillators. Yeah. All right. Well, let's let's move along. Uh, we had a question. <laughs> this, Doctor this, Doom. <laughs> this question reminded me of when your wife says, "We need to talk." Oh, it's like, Whoa, <laughs> oh no. that's scary. And yeah. so we got a similar question, and it comes from a scary kind of name, Doctor Doom Twenty Twenty. Says, <laughs> "We need to talk." <laughs> it says, "Can we talk about the SQ80 keyboard upgrade that that Centaur mm -hmm. offers?" Uh, we we make make a kit that basically changes some stuff in the SQ80. The SQ80 in Sonic SQ80 is mm -hmm. a great keyboard, a uh, great synthesizer, but the key bed on it is just clacky. Uh, you what, play what some notes that? and it's like clunk clunk clunk, and it's got it's got little felt uh, not mm -hmm. felt uh, little foam pads on the mm -hmm. bottom of each key that press against. Uh, press against the rest of the key bed when you when you play a note and when you press harder you can add that polyphonic aftertouch mm -hmm. so it's sort of a it's sort of a product of having that polyphonic aftertouch okay. but after years of sitting or playing or whatever existing those <laughs> pads start to get hard and so you, yeah. you hit those uh, keys and they're smacking on the bottom and it's making an annoying sound uh, sound just physical sound not, not anything mm -hmm. coming out the electronic outputs mm -hmm. just if you sit here and play it you hear that clunk 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 as you're playing those keys so centaur made a kit that eliminates that mm -hmm. and and makes the keyboard feel really good takes the clacking away uh it's a great product but we never have it available <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. so it it's uh not so great in that sense mm -hmm. the problem is some of those parts are hard to get and um Every now and then we get enough to put a kit together because mm -hmm. we, we need 60, 61 keys, so we need 61 of those parts. Every now and then we get enough and we'll put a few kits out there and there are a lot of people on the waiting list and boom, yeah. boom, they're gone in no time. So 
one of these days we're going to uh, buckle down and get an, get that stuff remanufactured and get it out there in quantity. But until then, we know a lot of people are waiting for them. We're not trying to be secretive or anything about it. Uh, we're not hoarding a whole stash of, <laughs> of bushing kits in, in, in the back and, you know, it, it, it's one of those things I think uh, we really do try to do our best to make these products available to everyone. I mean, at the end of the day, we all love keyboards and we love expressing ourselves with them and we want, there, there's no reason why we wouldn't want to share that joy with other right, people. Right. Um, so it's just going to come down to just a little bit of time and a little bit of patience. And yeah, it is on our radar. Well, and it comes down to, uh, it takes a lot of resources to actually manufacture something mm -hmm. like that. And uh, so we we got to come up with uh, not, not, not even so much of the money, but just the time to devote to it and get, get the right stuff manufactured. Yeah. But yeah, like you say, it's definitely on our radar and, mm -hmm. and something we want to get going, but yeah. Mm. I, I actually, uh, and this is, y'all are gonna, y'all are gonna hate me for this, I've never played an SQ80. And I know we did a whole video on one, that was before I started with Centaur. And um, I've kind of been enthralled with the idea of it, you know, the three oscillator per voice, uh, and aftertouch. You've and never played an SQ80? I've never played an SQ80. That so, so next week we <laughs> may have another uh, person in this chair? No, yeah, I'm just kidding. Yeah. We're, I did try the VFX recently, which I really enjoyed. I and, mean, and how'd you like the keyboard? I, th I really yeah. liked it. I loved the feel of it, uh -huh. um, especially for some of the patches, like the cello patches. It, it had a nice feedback as far as when you're playing a percussive pad yeah. and to have that little bit of just enough tension to kind of bounce back. And so the, so the kit that nobody can get their hands on <laughs> it takes the SQ80 keypad mm -hmm. and makes it feel like the VFX oh, keypad. Wow. The, the VFX yeah. and the ASR10 and the SD1, um, TS10, all those keyboards share the same kind of mm -hmm. keypad. And so our SQ80 kit will make it feel that good. Wow. So if we can, yeah. if we can just get some out there. Maybe for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely no, not no. for Christmas. <laughs> all right. <laughs> That's right around the corner. Okay. Let's talk about another common question, a little little more uh, positive one, that that we can actually get the product or that, yeah. that other people can get the product. Uh, Pacifier Music is asking about whitening keys. He's got yeah. some keys that uh, are turned yellow, and uh, that's a real common thing, especially with older vintage mm -hmm. keyboards, especially with ones that m may have sat inside of a window with mm -hmm. the sun shining on them for a long time or something. The keys start to turn yellow, the plastic starts to yellow, mm -hmm. and it is possible to reverse that. And you've yeah. done that probably more than you <laughs> want to admit. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've done it many, many a time. And um, so what we use here in-house, it's actually a hair product. Um, it's a hydrogen peroxide cream that's used for lightening your hair color, and it's very important to get the cream based. Uh, you can get hydrogen peroxide, you know, from any grocery store, but that's not quite the same thing. Th this is, has kind of a thicker consistency to it, and it'll really adhere to the plastic. Um, we, we go to Sally Beauty Supply and mm -hmm. get some. Yeah, uh, that's that's our place to get it. So I, I remember w when I was in middle school, I, I begged my mom for this hair gel. They would lighten <laughs> your hair. It was uh, Ricky Martin had just come out, and so you know he had the little dyed frosted tips. Um, I don't think the hair gel would work. <laughs> L.A. Looks was the brand, um, but so what we use it's it's a it's a cream based hydrogen peroxide hair lightening cream. It's also very important to wear gloves while you do this, um, and of course. You want to do this on a very sunny day. Uh, the UV light is going to be very important for the process. Um, but basically, you're going to have to remove all of your keys. And then I kind of set them in uh, like aluminum pans, the same kind you would use, you know, 4th of July, barbecuing. But anything really that will just keep them face up, the part that you want to lighten. Mm -hmm. uh, and then with a paintbrush, I, I brush it across the top. And you use it straight out of the bottle, or straight do you out, it? straight out the bottle, okay. straight out the bottle, and then I try to set it somewhere where it's going to be in full sun for a majority of the day. Uh, it'll generally dry after the first hour or two, and I'll go back outside and apply a second coat. And usually within 24 hours, you're going to see a pretty drastic difference in the coloration. And hopefully we'll bring back some of that. It'll go from being ivory, as I like to call it, to being you know the original color that it was when you got the keyboard. And and we've taken some keys that 
are far from ivory. They're mm -hmm. like nasty brown <laughs> yeah. and done that. And it, it brings them back a lot of the way, but a lot of times if they're too far yeah. gone, it won't, it won't do the whole thing. And, and it is important to note that there's a difference between oxidation or just the natural discoloration from the UV process and nicotine. Now, if your keys are yellow because you're smoking a cigar a day <laughs> around it, um, the peroxide cream will help, but it's probably not going to remove that nicotine staining. So that's just something on the surface, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. this would be, be a good time to plug Key Renew. Yeah. Uh, our Centaur Key Renew mm -hmm. uh, is just some, some goop that you can squirt a little dollop on the key, rub it on there, and practically in no time, uh, any, anything on the surface like that is, is cleaned off very yeah. easily. Uh, any surface scratches, you know, if they're not gouges, you, you're yeah. not going to fix that. But if, if they're just minor scratches, you can polish mm -hmm. those out. Um, so those are those are two good products to use for really yeah. rejuvenating your key bed and making them look look new. Yeah, I'm pretty picky about my keys. I may not be able to play them, but I like them to look nice, <laughs> you know. Um, and the really cool thing about Key Renew is I like to hold on to the rag that I use with that. Yeah. And yeah, af me after, too. <laughs> yeah, after after a few uses, um, sometimes you can really get a really nice polish out of that without even having to reply, the reapply the Key Renew. You can just kind of buff it out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's real handy just to have around. You grab mm -hmm. grab the rag and zip, 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 and there, there's a good key. Yeah. So yeah, it's cool stuff. Yeah. All right. Um, oh, one one other note about uh, the key whitening. If you go to our website, centaur.com, in the upper left corner-ish area, right under the logo, I think you'll see a, a tab or a, mm -hmm. a header that says DIY help or something, mm -hmm. and just click on that. Uh, we do have a number of uh, tutorial sort of things there, and there's one, I think the third one down in the list mm -hmm. on exactly what we're talking about. And it shows the picture of the bottles of stuff yeah. that we get. And just one more one more thing to add at the end of this. Um, <laughs> you're going to have to wash off that peroxide cream once you're done before you install the keys on <laughs> your on your uh, Cuban. Because I know if I don't mention that, I'm going to see an email tomorrow that says, I've gotten this far in the process. What do I do next? And so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you can just rinse that off with tap water. You know, just stick them in the sink. Um, here in house, I, I actually keep like a 99 cent toothbrush that's specifically just for knocking off things. It'll kind of cake up and flake and dry. And once it gets to that point, it's very easy to get off. Um, you're probably still going to want to wear gloves for that process as well. Um, w once it's dried off, it's not going to be as astringent on your skin. But if you do have sensitive skin, I would just go ahead and wear gloves for washing it off as well. Or if you're Carlos, you might want to just yeah, just wipe those keys uh, do, on do, the, do the, on the frosted the tips. tips. <laughs> just the tips. <laughs> <laughs> if you got some cream left over, you can give it to the missus. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> All righty. Well, let's move on to new stuff. Uh, one Synthomania? Synthomania. Synthomania coming up November 21st. It's going to be a virtual event, mm -hmm. so you don't have to be in our neighborhood to attend. Mm -hmm. You can attend from anywhere on the planet. Uh, we, got a, we have two live performers scheduled, um, and we have... Uh, some giveaways. We're going to be giving away the mm -hmm. Korg Electribe 2BL. Uh, let's see, we're going to be showcasing all of the stuff that we have around here. We're going to be demoing uh, not only new keyboards like the Moog One, the Waldorf Quantum, stuff like that. We'll be demoing some older vintage keyboards. Um, we have some really rare stuff. Uh, we, we have a lot of stuff that doesn't necessarily work yet, but we'll do some quick yes. shows of it, like mm. uh, Synclav, the the Synergy, uh, Chromos. Uh, yeah, a lot, a lot of Chromos. stuff that people don't normally get to put <laughs> yeah. their hands on. We can put our hands on them for you, mm -hmm. e even if we can't uh, play all of those and make noise. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and it, it, it's kind of comical, but there's been a few times where I'm like looking for a tool, and I go to reach into the toolbox, and it's like. Oh, we have this really rare keyboard that's just sitting here. <laughs> and it's the things that I have found in broom closets alone here. <laughs> It'll make for some very entertaining Synthomania videos. And we're working really yeah. hard. We actually started filming them today. Um, so I'm very excited about getting that new content and new material out. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be good. So 
Synthomania, November 21st from 1 o'clock to 5 o'clock Central Standard Time. Um, one of these days I'm going to convert that to Greenwich Mean Time so all the Europeans and other, yeah. other folks can sort of have a better reference to that. But uh, just check our website. There's a banner on our website that'll take mm -hmm. you to the Synthomania stuff. And uh, one, one cool thing too is in, in, uh, toward the end of that broadcast, We'll be switching over to Korg. Mm -hmm. They're going to jump in and demo some really neat new products. Yeah. Um, and so with that, we do have a couple of announcements of, of new Korg stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, they've announced their Nautilus line. There's a, a Nautilus 6, 7, and 8, basically, a 61 key, 76 mm -hmm. key, I believe, and an 88 key version of the Nautilus. And this is the uh, the... It's a scaled-down version of the extremely popular Korg Kronos. Yeah. Uh, so much less expensive, but still with a lot of the mojo and the juice of the Kronos. It, it really builds on their rich history of the workstation. Mm -hmm. I mean, as we know, Korg, you know, pioneered the workstation with the M1, and the technology has only gotten better. Yeah. And um, one thing that I was really taken back by were the multi-sampled uh, pianos that they had. God, those sounded good. Yeah. It, it, one thing that they really nailed was that uh, sympathetic resonance. You yeah. know, the ability to play something and to kind of hear those intricate details. So I'm, I'm really excited for that, for those new products. Yeah, that's true. That, <laughs> the grand piano sounded stunning in, mm -hmm. in that. Um, and then they have another new product that, uh, that's of great interest to synth heads and synth yeah. geeks. The Op6, which is a six operator FM scent, mm -hmm. but this is not your grandfather's DX7. No, no. And your, your grandfather had a DX7, right? I think my great grandfather. <laughs> had one. You, you know how like when you, your son is always kind of like rebellious and they're not into whatever the dad's in, uh -huh. so it skipped a generation. Uh -huh. Now it's back to me, <laughs> full on synth head. <laughs> um, DX7 was the most produced synthesizer ever in the history of the universe. Mm -hmm. uh, six operator FM synth, and so the the Korg. Op 6 kind of starts with that lineage and, uh, and then uh, just takes it to the next level. Yeah, so. way to the next level. The, the, the way that you can program, not, not only is there a wide selection of built-in algorithms, but then the ability to do user editable algorithms. I'm very intrigued by that. Um, stunning effects as well. And also a nice form factor. It seems like it's going to be in the same form factor as the wave state, mm -hmm. which I really enjoy because it's it's very easily moved, very portable. Um, and of course, as opposed to like a traditional DX7, you have a lot more sliders, a lot more knobs, you know, a lot more tactile feel and response. And on the DX7, each operator was a sine wave and a mm -hmm. sine wave only. And, yeah. and on this, you have a multitude of things you can do. So. Yeah. It's going to be uh, really, really a nice product. It sounds great, oh, and yeah. <laughs> retail price, the street price of seven ninety nine. So yeah, yeah, it's going to be a, it's going to be a winner, <laughs> I think. And uh, so that's one of the products that you'll see demoed by the Korg guys um, at Synthomania, and so they'll really be able to to do it justice and show it off. Yeah. So. And then at the end of that, they're going to give away that Electribe. So. Yeah. Awesome. So, I believe. Oh, let's. Uh, one other thing. Uh, the a Apex. Apex Base yeah. Station. Base Station Two is. Yeah, the, the Apex yeah. Twin uh, Special Edition Novation Base Station Two. We're gonna have some in stock. Yeah, it's um, caused, caused a lot of buzz. So you've probably yeah. already heard about that, but mm -hmm. we have some on the way here. Yeah. So exciting times. Exciting yeah. times to be alive. If you're into keyboards, synthesizers, and just anything, anything uh, music related, yeah, no doubt. Yeah. So. All right, so a lot of good stuff to look out for. We'll see you at Synthomania, hopefully, <laughs> uh, and that'll be a live stream on our YouTube channel. But uh, just go to synthomania.net, or there's a banner on our webpage. And uh, yeah, Korg is one of our sponsors, and so get a chance to win that Electribe. Yeah. All right, and with that, I guess we'll bid you modulator. modulator.